Yes. yes. Yeah. The Society for Animation Studies uh, was formed about uh, 20 years ago in Los Angeles, and at the time it was a small group of scholars who basically were trying to come together because there wasn't a, a community. Uh, there were very few books that were around that were really scholarly in nature, and um, they wanted, they were all interested in, in trying to promote that kind of literature, and I was one of the people that was there. It was in Los Angeles, and since then, it's grown into an international group of people who are writing and researching on all different aspects of animation, and they're both practitioners and what you might call theorists. A lot of them teach in universities or you know, institutional settings, but there's also quite a few people who are practitioners, filmmakers, festival directors, things like that. And what's the, um, the criteria for um, each, each meeting, each conference? Well, each conference is, is scheduled in a different city, different location around the world, and that is partly to help people in different parts of the world be able to go so they can afford it more easily. And it's really up to the individual um, conference planner how he or she wishes to compose the, the conference itself. But typically they involve not only panels, but special guests, screenings, uh, social events, and roundtable discussions of teaching practices or uh, contemporary concerns in the world of animation production, for example. Uh, and what's the main way in which it's changed in the last um, five, ten years? The membership has grown quite a bit, and that's been partly because of the increased interest of animation scholarship, which has come out of the increased production. You know, it's been kind of follow that, and as universities have accepted animation as a scholarly discipline, and the main change has been the diversity and the international diversity and the diversity in the papers themselves, and that means that today we're seeing, for example, a whole panel on Japanese animation, which in itself isn't that uncommon. But the fact that they're very specialized topics, people who have in really in-depth knowledge, not just about Japanese animation, but about all the issues that surround it. And also, because other scholars who aren't working in Japanese animation are finding connections. Uh, for example, one person today was doing something on Japanese animation and families, the depiction of families. And another person was uh, doing research on American sitcom animations that also have depictions of families and they were talking about the intersections between those. Whereas a few years ago, there weren't those kinds of common points. Anime was one thing, mm -hmm. and everybody else was doing something else. But, you know, very different now. And um, I was saying I saw the, um, the gaming sort of dead death, death series of talks this morning. And I was wondering to what extent um, they, it's applicable. Um, the, um, how much they're involved in production, whether this is taken back into the production of gaming, this type of scholarly analysis? Well, I think where you see part of the results is in when people write the books, that then they are read by certainly not every practitioner. You know, that's just not really going to happen. But by people who are, are interested in then perhaps going into teaching. And so they have those, those books to assign to read to their students, for example, and so they can then launch lectures around them and, and have discussion. But in the past, it's been difficult to find books which were appropriate for teaching a diverse group of, of courses. And that basically meant that, that the courses weren't, I mean, they may have been taught, but they were taught in kind of a, a difficult way. People didn't have readings to assign. They had to go to the trouble of trying to research the material themselves. If they weren't specialists, they didn't quite know where to get the information. So now when books come out on the topic, for example, after the conference papers typically are the first step in writing a book or publishing in a journal. And so this is where people get in, you know, the initial research. They get feedback, they present it to their peers, and then they move on. So after this then, hopefully many of these works will be published so that that second ring of people who are interested in the scholarship but not coming to the conference will then pick it up and then further disseminate it to their students. And as far as... Um industry relation, relationships, how, how do you see that? Well, it varies, again. Now, uh, here we have, for example, people from Ardman are coming to talk. And I think that it's always been a goal of the society members as a whole to integrate production and uh, theory, that we don't want to exclude practitioners. We have certainly got 
um, several people who primarily are artists or are are filmmakers, if you will, animators of various sort of varying uh, sorts, and those people typically also teach. Um, that's mainly their connection, sort of, um, but not always. And so uh, there is a great integration of, of those two things. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and I, I think it's going to be a. Is, we're going to put it on the website, so it'll be quite short. Okay. Um, but. I mean, I'd like to speak to you again afterwards, find out how, how it's gone. Where is it happening next year? Next year, probably, we'll have the conference in Atlanta, Georgia, at the, sponsored by the Savannah College of Art and Design, because okay. they have a, a lot of interest in that and good facilities. So we'll probably do that. But uh, so far, from what I can see with this conference, what's been really nice about it is that, for the first time, we have a lot more people coming who aren't giving papers. They're not really part of that inner circle of mm -hmm. members only, mm -hmm. which in the past has been the case. This year we have several people I've heard that are just coming to listen and participate, and they may have been to a conference in the past or they may not have, but it's really drawing a bigger crowd. We have two panels running simultaneously, which we don't typically have, and we're having papers posted on the, on the wall. They're called poster presentations. Right. And so there's multiple venues, if you will, and um, it's, you know, it's really, the membership has grown substantially, so it's a very positive sign. And international, too. People from very far away are coming. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's a sign that it's, um, it's influencing um, popular culture a lot more, that there's this level of academic research coming off it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great news for me because I, you know, I like the theoretical side of things. I'm, mm -hmm. Spent rather too long in universities myself, so I'm, I'm very familiar. I'm comfortable with this uh, this level of analysis, really. So I think it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, there's something for everyone, really. You know, some things are are even too theoretical for me in a way because I'm more of a historian. You know, I really lean towards that side strongly. But then when you listen to other people responding, they're saying that's really great. That really inspired me, and so you realize that everyone's getting something different mm -hmm. out of it. And What's also nice is that the people who have been in this organization historically are super nice. And so there's a lot more newcomers this time. But a lot of us have been to many, like 10, 15 of these conferences. And so we come back together and we've seen how each other has matured and how we've developed. And people who were starting out as young scholars at one point now are leaders in the field. And so it's very rewarding and it it's really helps us to see that you know there's support for what we do there's, you know each in each other and it's, it's something between a scholarly conference and a reunion mm -hmm. you know, it's nice yeah. and people are very receptive to what you're doing so it's not a harsh environment where people are criticizing you or questioning your mm -hmm. your work i've um i'd like to do um have you have you seen the magazine which is sort of floating around not yet so no i'll get you a few copies but um it'd be really nice um to get a sort of academic Page in there. Yeah. Um, what's the deal with your journal? How often is it published? The journal uh, that I publish is uh, comes out. Um, I have a copy of it if you want to see it, but uh, it comes out once a year mm -hmm. in fall, late fall. Right. And so um, it's a print publication. It's just, you know, and also the Society for Animation Studies has an online journal, okay. and that is organized by years. And so when January first comes, we open up the new issue. And when it's the end of December, that seals it. And so whatever articles have been published during that time, that constitutes the, the, the volume. Right. And so that's free. It's online at the Society for Animation Studies website, which is animationstudies.org. Okay, great.